Hello everyone, a man of interest here with This Week in Keyboards. As you may have noticed, it is in fact Tuesday, and I've decided based on the last month, Tuesday is actually a bit more ideal for the release of these videos because oftentimes I miss news or announcements that arrive on Mondays, and they become very much out of date by the time the next episode rolls on by. So expect these videos for the news to be releasing Tuesdays or even Wednesdays from here on out. But at least once a week is the goal, and for particularly bad weeks like we've had, possibly two. The news isn't too heavy this month, but there definitely is a substantial amount, so let's dive straight into it. Starting off in the keycap news, per the norm, we have six topics. Let's start off things a bit catty with our cat profile news topics. First off, we have the interest check for Cat Ice Dragon from Drifting Bunnies. It's a blue set inspired by Eastern Dragons as opposed to Western ones, so think long boys, not thick boys. So in this set, we have some dark blue alphas with a cream white with the reverse as the modifiers. It looks like both text and icon mod packs are in the works, as well as a pretty interesting novelties kit. But the mod kits aren't the only things you'll be seeing double of, because there are also two alpha kits. A standard Latin alpha kit and one Kangji Yuzhen alphas for that Chinese flair. While I'm not the biggest fan of sets that feature a darker alpha than the modifiers, this might be a good cat pickup if you want a deeply, deeply, deeply blue set. Our next set is also of the cat profile, and it also has a touch of blue. It's Cat Arctic by McNoss. The JTK version has come and gone, but it's a new year and a new winter season, which means a new Arctic. I don't know if there's a trend, but it seems like uh, we got another two alpha kits, another two modifier kits. I'm not sure how I feel about this trend, but eh. So, we got the standard alphas, the standard mods, which I think is probably one of the best combos compared to the Frostbite alphas and the snowman modifiers, unless you're going for that straight blue on white look. There are two blue cat interest checks, so you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to compare them, right? Well, I mean I don't have to compare them, but here's my here's my here's my two cents. Here's my preferences. Between the two at the moment, I'd probably choose Cat Arctic, but we'll see if Cat Arctic can really survive the jump from ABS to PBT, as well as from Cherry Profile to Cat's Profile. Hmm. What do you guys think? What is your preferred blue cat set for the month? Our next two topics is the same set in two flavors. It's Godspeed over on drop.com as both a GMK set and an SA set, both designed by Mito. Let's start with GMK. 125 will net you either the Armstrong or Columbia base kit, which is a good deal of support in the base kits for that price, which makes them pretty acceptable. Although that back arrow for the 1U, that, that small arrow with the BSP, oh no, 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 not, not a fan, don't, no, no, no. But fans of the set will undoubtedly like all the modifier keys with their unique space words, space theme things, launching and NASA things. Of course, separate 40s kit, novelties kit, spacebar modifiers, or spacebar kit, the works. Let's move over to the SA version. Uh, this is the version that most people would say is the most thematic version. On the other hand, I would say it's the worst version, but that's simply because I'm not down to clown with SA as a profile. So if you thought those cat sets earlier got just spinning on so many alphas and modifier kits, Mito is one upping the pack. Three alpha kits, three modifiers, oh, two numpad kits. Oh wait, I'm not done yet, because there's two more base kits, Mito Speed, which is a laser version of all row three, and Gene Speed, which is just all plain version of Godspeed. I didn't know that there was an arms race going of pushing the amount of kits available, but I guess Mito is winning it. Pushing it, this, this arms race is going way too far. I'm perfectly honest, there's almost too many options for people. Even those who are fans, it's like you have decision anxiety on what you want to get. But hey, if you really like this set, have at it because you got a ton of choices. Okay, next we have an interest check for another set. Pink has definitely been a pretty hot color lately, and if you're still down to hang with a pink set, check out the interest check for GMK Blush by Sleep Dealer. Originally a GMK Feet Picks, this pink set evokes the pink fleshy reality that most of us must live with, having those walking appendages constantly attached to us. With pretty muted modifiers, this set definitely isn't a loud 
pink set, but it's it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. An almost pastel-like pink with subdued modifiers. For some reason, that tan background color, of, like it makes all the renders look like it's in a sandstorm. I'm not sure what's going on there. Yeah. We'll see how it is, but in my opinion, Sleep Dealer didn't start on the right foot. Since these are Pantone colors, not Rao. Come on, folks, you should know the drill by now. GMK likes Rao. That's the most, the, uh, that's, the, that's the kind of colors they are most comfortable matching. Rao, no Pantone. Our next set also has pink in it, but uses Rao colors instead of Pantones. Yes, that's the right move to do. It's the intercheck for GMK Posh by Anne Loves Bears. This set is inspired by the main colors of the British clothing company, Jack Wills. This set features a rich blue, muted pink, and GMK CP white. As a note, the colors still need to be finalized with one of the design goals is to make that pink a bit more saturated. Of the renders, uh, the colors look honestly pretty different between them which is like these inconsistencies are really bothering me. So I hopefully, hopefully all this gets figured out sooner than later. It looks like one of the trends today is multiple kits. So we have a version with pink alpha, a version with blue alphas, a version with pink modifiers. So we got two alpha options, two modifier options. That's exhausting. Not, not, not all of these are gonna make MOQ, right? Are they? I, I don't know, I don't know. I definitely can't see myself getting this set based on how it currently is, but it could have potential. It could have potential. That's it for the key caps, but how about the key boards? For what feels like the first time in a cool minute, it's a balanced news with six topics as well for the keyboard news. And let's start with the interest check for the Sakura 660 by Fropsy of Satisfactory Designs. This 660 layout board has a it has chunky bezels. Look at them. But it does have a pretty interesting bottom and sides and back. This board will be running on Prototypist with only 45 boards available in four colors, those being Lilac, E-White, Nightshade, and Arctic Blue. This board will have a rather shallow five degree type angle, feature either a copper or carbon fiber plate that will be top mounted and have its PCB designed by Heine, which will also uh, feature Alps and Cherry MX support. As you know, I'm not the biggest fan of the layout. It, the layout just isn't for me. I mean. The 660 layout has been favored by those who enjoy using those two separated keys for whatever fancy macros or shortcuts, or honestly, artists in display. That's that's what those two keys are for, let's be real. This board weighs in at 5.73 pounds, and it's gonna be hefty, so therefore, probably expensive. Our next board to talk about is going to definitely be expensive. The FLX Virgo by Flexerman. The group buy for this board opens on Saturday, February 15th, 7.30 Pacific time, 50 public boards available. First 10 will be first come first serve, and the next 40 will be raffled. So good luck if you're in it to win it. But what do you get if you win it? It's a 12 degree split TKL, which means it's offset 12 degrees this way. The typing angle this way is seven degrees with a gasket mounted plate and a brass weight below. The plates will be available in aluminum, carbon fiber, brass, and FR4. So what are the color options? Aubergine purple, hibiscus red, onyx black, space silver, teal green. So it's a pretty nice board, pretty big board. Guess how much is it gonna cost you? $560 before shipping. That's a pretty penny. And if you're pretty baller, there's gonna be five public special editions available. And these will feature a solid brass base with a polished stainless steel weight, making this a hefty boy a super hefty boy, like super hefty. And it's gonna weigh on your wallet because it's an extra $130 for that special edition. I like the idea of this board. And to be perfectly honest with you, the only thing I'm not a fan of, of course, is that price. But hey, when you're machining that much aluminum, especially, you know, the way that top part goes, that's like one chunk that got to machine out, kind of makes sense. I don't know if I'll be buying this board. I really like it, but I don't know if I can justify buying it now with Keycon and everything around the corner. Next up is an interest check that I forgot about last week and somehow no one called me out on it. It's the interest check for the Duck Viper and Eagle V3 by Duck Keyboards and Proxy to the West by Elton5354. This time there are changes made to the sides and an option for a half plate, yes. And of course a change bottom piece. I personally still like my Viper V2 quite a bit and you know what? I'd love for a V3 to join my collection. For me, it's the Viper over the Eagle any day of the week and twice on Sundays. 
based on the picture so far, we got silver, gray, and black are the available safe choices to go with and that will work with almost any keycap set. Come on, it's a Duck Viper. Yes, I am ready. Even ready for that bad PCB. Our next keyboard interest check is by is the Lyra by Alex Barb. This is a 60% hot swap keyboard with a very non-standard layout. How non-standard? I mean, look at it. It's 60% by technicality, but it's basically a 40% plus part of a numpad. It's stretched out pretty wide despite not being that girthy. The case looks all right, but the layout is a big no-no for me. I will say this is more accepting of a Dvorak layout for 40% than any other 40% I've seen in the past, pretty much. I'm not big on having to get all sorts of weird kits or kits that don't exist to have GMK profiled keycaps on a 40%, so it's a, it's a big pass for me. I actually think a lot of people in the 40% crowd would really enjoy this, even more so if it was marketed as a 40 plus 20% in parentheses keyboard since there's so much more similarity to any 40% than 60% that I know of. Next up is the interest check for the Hex 3C by Castor Boris. This is actually a 60% keyboard uh, as that aims to disrupt the current budget market by implementing an O-ring bottom mount. Interesting. 7 degree typing angle, aluminum case. Rating of this board is expected to cost between $100 to $150 assuming it can hit its 50 unit MOQ. 100 unit cap. Overall, case aesthetic, very simple, but that's fine since the focus, I'm sure, is on that bottom O-ring mount. So hopefully that works out for them. I, I don't know, what do you guys think about this board? Does the d does there need to be more budget boards in this range to compete against the Tofu and other boards similar to that? I don't know, but it's nice to see more co competition even in that um, lower price sphere. Lastly, in the keyboard news, is the group buy for the Kanone? Konone? Yes, Kanone 65 by Kinda Keyboards. The group I won't be starting until Saturday the 15th and will be running until March 14th with only 90 units available. So, how much does this Edge 65% board cost? 410 euros, AKA 447 freedom dollars. So, what's this getting you? Five degree typing angle, USB-C, four over feet, 1.5 millimeter plate. But how about that mounting method, Huey? How about it? Well, here is where it gets interesting because we have two options for mounting. It's not the tray or top like the G60. Oh, no, 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 no. The choices are screw mounting and magnetic mounting. Magnets, how do they work, right? The board is certainly quite a looker. I mean, it has more edge than a mid-2000s anime music video with Linkin Park's In The End or Crawling playing as the music. That's some serious edge. I hope there's a 60% version in the future because that's definitely what I'd more lean into with those big edges. Okay, we have a few etc. topics remaining for the news doc and I think they're worth discussing. First off, Mech Madness presented by Dixie Mech once again is live. It's a fun event that allows people to make their own brackets a la March Madness where people will be following popular sets as they are voted to victory. Compare your bracket versus others to see how well your predictions fare and maybe you'll win a prize. It's a fun yearly event. Please check out the rules and check out the event. It's fun to follow along. Maybe we'll do updates on this channel, on this, this this video series. We'll see. Let me know what you guys think. Brackets will be open until the end of the month, and the brackets running are for keyboards, key sets, and desk mats. So get thinking about how you're going to build your bracket. Our next topic is still Dixie Mech related, and it's their new fulfillment services. As Dixie Mech claims in large letters, not all keycap sets are created equal. So how is this different from Dixie just being a vendor for a normal set? Well, this is tailored to small run sets where MOQs are basically all you're hitting. It's a simple four set process. One, the designer is responsible for half of the responsibilities with the Dixie Mech, the other. So let's go with step one. Step one is you, the designer, gathering customers. So you'll need to gather enough customers to make MOQ for whatever design you want. Next, Dixie Mech will start to collect all the orders, including all the funds to pay the manufacturer. Step three, the designer will place the order for the keycaps while Dixie Mech pays for that invoice that you receive with the funds collected. And the final step, Dixie Mech will be shipping out all the sets so you don't have to worry 
about fulfillment. The model is similar to what Novel Keys did with SA Olivia, where Olivia was mainly responsible for gathering a large amount of people on her own, uh, interested in SA Olivia with Novel Keys essentially handling the rest. I think this model is a good model for many people who may be interested in a smaller run but don't want to handle the fulfillment. Unfortunately, the only manufacturer supported at the time is Signature Plastics because they're the only ones that will make uh, keycaps with a lower order quantity than GMK or other manufacturers. So what does Dixie Mac get out of this? Of course, they need to get their cut, which is a small percentage of the unit price as the payments. It's an interesting play that they'll be making and we'll see how this ends up and seeing what sets are made through this method. Read more in the link. Last thing in the news, I wanted to end today on a good story, a good note, a pause, something positive, especially with all the negativity that may be around these days. As you may know, SwitchMod.net teamed up with Drop.com to sell 205 Grade Zero, 3203, and 3204 a la the Drop style. Awesome. Well, not for everyone. The fulfillment of the lubricants hit a bit of a snafu. Unfortunately, the section of Drop's fulfillment facility in charge of separating the containers of lubes weren't organizing them properly and some people did not receive what they ordered. So it's kind of a kind of a slippery situation. We're killing it today. And rightly so. Crowbit of Switched Mod is a solid guy and decided he won't wait for Drop to fix it themselves. He's going to fix it himself on his own. So until February 23rd, he'll be aggregating every single wrong order he can at his own cost and ship people their correct orders to compensate them for their difficulties. Please read the link in the description below if this applies to you. And I wanna say this is an absolutely stand-up move by Crowbit because he could have just dusted his hands and say, well, mash shop messed up, they need to handle this. No, Crowbit picked up what was dropped. I think that's a great example of positivity in our community. Thank you, Crowbit. That's an awesome thing you did. That's it for this week in keyboards. Let me know what you guys think down below about this episode and let me know if you want me to cover the brackets for Med Mech Madness week by week. Are there any group buys you plan on joining this month? If you like this content, consider hitting that like button, subscribing, dilling that bell for notifications when new videos pop up. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace. I wonder if I should just do all bow tie and ties from here on out. We'll have to see. What do you guys think? Let me know. Let me know. Still, still thinking about it. Still been pretty casual for this week in keyboards, but we'll see. Maybe they'll change.